Hey, what's going on gamers? It's the chronic gamer here back with another YouTube video today We're doing a champion spotlight on Kashin and Let's just start off with artifacts. So I'm rocking Thunder Fury two-piece and gladiators final two-piece now I'm rocking uh, these two set bonuses because they're actually easier to get because you're gonna get gladiators um, just while killing bosses and doing all your stuff so gladiators you should come by just by uh, getting to AR 45 so you don't have to artifact farm a lot of this stuff once you get to AR 45 and I have 21% uh, damage substat here which is huge as well as the 31.1% crit rate uh, helmet and this is what you're gonna want you're gonna want a lot of crit damage and a lot of crit rate and then we also have an attack stat those those three are really really good obviously defense and health you're not gonna want as much but this is a really good helmet I'd say the only thing that would be better is if these were reversed if instead of crit rate I got crit damage and the reason why I'm saying that is because I have a crit rate weapon if you have if you don't have a crit rate weapon uh, you'd prefer a crit rate helm over a crit damage helm, but because I have a crit rate rate weapon, I'm going to get a lot of crit rate, and I am often going over the the cap of 80% crit. I often go to 85 or 90, depending on the artifacts that I'm rocking at the moment, and which is which isn't good because if you're at 90 your percent crit rate, then you have 10% crit rate that's just not doing anything for you. For the cup, I actually don't have a good cup right now. I only have a electro damage cup, which is what you want, but it's a purple. And the substats are really bad, except for attack. Energy recharge is all right. Elemental mastery, it's better than the health and defense. And then I have defense, so not too good. I'd prefer some crit rate and crit damage on my cup, which would allow me to also uh, transition into more crit damage with some of my other gear. For the flower, we have Thunderbird's Mercy, and the flower is all right. It has some attack, which is really, really good. Energy recharge is awesome, and crit damage. I would prefer to have some crit rate as well uh, instead of defense, because with Kashing, you're going to want a lot of crit. When you're building a Kashing, she's going to be your DPS. You're going to want crit rate, crit damage, and a bunch of it. But overall, this flower isn't bad. I have three good substats. It could be better, though. And right now, for my off piece, I'm rocking the Bard's Arrow Feather. And the only reason why I'm rocking this is just because the crit damage is really, really uh, good. I usually... Um, I prefer a little bit more crit rate. Uh, it rolled defense a little too many times, but it's, it's all right. We got 311, rank 20. Bard Zero Feather. So it's pretty good. We got a four piece Gladiator's Hourglass, which has 7.2% crit, which is amazing. That's awesome. We want some crit damage on here, though. Crit damage, you can never have enough crit damage. But crit rate, I want to, you want to sit at about 80%. So if we look at my stats right now, you can see my crit rate's at 71.1%, which is all right, uh, and 116.9% crit damage which is pretty good as well and something that you guys should know about Kishing is that when you ascend her she actually gets free crit damage she scales off crit damage automatically so when you're building Kishing you're gonna want to get your crit crit rate up as soon as you can crit rate is really really important on Kishing because you're already getting crit damage for free you're gonna want a bunch of crit rate looking at our weapon here you can tell you can see that i'm using the black sword and another good good really really good weapon that you could use on kishing is lion's roar and that's just because it, you can uh, get the 24 percent or 20 percent depending on how how refined it is extra damage on basically every attack uh, or ability against enemies that have a bunch of electro on it already and stuff like that and pyro as well, but you're mainly you're an electro user, so you you really care about the electro. And another, uh, so when you're when you think about weapons, obviously battle pass sword is the one I like the most because you get that crit rate already just built into the sword. And when you have that crit rate, 
on on the sword you're gonna probably want to go for a crit damage instead of crit rate helm just because you don't want to you want to sit it around 70 percent and a lot of the times you're gonna get upgrades which are gonna push you over and fishing has her own ways to increase her crit rate even out inside combat as well so black sword's a great one uh, any sword with crit damage is amazing, and also Lion's Roar is also really amazing. Now, for my artifacts, I'm, I am rocking the 2-2, but you can rock the 4-piece set. So this one, 4-piece, increased damage against enemies affected by Electro by 35%. This is the same ability that you're going to have on your Lion's Roar. So if you have this and Lion's Roar, they're going to add up and they're going to help each other up, right? So Lion's Roar is going to give you anywhere from, I think... 20 to 30 42 40 30 to 40 ish percent depending on how refined you are and then this is going to give you another 35 so if you don't have any refinement on your lion's roar it's 35 percent plus the 20 so that's an extra 55 percent damage when you have applied electro to the enemy now that is a really really good strategy on kishing but i'm one of those people that like the consistency of, and just it's easier to go 2-2 two -two because it's easier to get the artifacts and you don't have to worry about applying electro because if you end up doing a lot of elemental reactions whenever you do an elemental reaction you're actually going to consume the electro that's on the enemies and when you consume the electro that's on the enemies you're not going to get that bonus damage so for just peace of mind personally I, I just like how easy it is to just not have to worry about that and just get the small 15 percent instead of the 35. i do think long term i am going to switch to probably the four piece uh set of thundering of what is it thunder soother because i think long term the 35 percent is way better than the 15 percent and the 18 percent increase in attack but to each their own two two is really good but four piece set Thunder Soothers is also really, really nice. Another really great option that you guys can do is you can do four piece gladiators, which is, well, since you're gonna be autoing a crap ton as Kashing and she is your main DPS, you can actually go for the four piece gladiators for that 35% increased attack damage for normal attacks. Now it is now it is really really good, but I it is also kind of restrictive because it's only normal attacks, and I like to charge attack a bunch with Kaching. And you are going to always be applying a bunch of Electro anyways. So that's why I prefer 2-2 two -two, or 4-piece Thunder Soothers because you are going to be activating those regardless a bunch. And Thunder Soothers will do more for you if, you if they have Electro because they will increase your abilities, your charge attacks, and anything you do. So that's why I prefer Thunder Soothers. But 4-piece... Gladiators is not a bad option for you guys as well. So let's move on to talents here for you guys. What we're going to do is, well, I'm rocking level 7 basic attacks, which I, I, I basic attack a lot. I do normal attacks and charge attacks a bunch with Kishing because you are a lot of your main damage is coming from there. And her E will actually have, it's actually pretty cool. I'll just show you guys real quick. So what you can do with your E is you can tap it to throw it out, and then you can tap it again to teleport to there and do a bunch of damage. And as you can see, my sword has a bunch of purple particles on there for 5 seconds, which means that when every, every time I attack for 5 seconds, I'm actually applying electro damage as well. Which is why the cup being electro damage is actually really, really important, because you are going to be doing a bunch of electro damage even when you auto attack. Another thing you can do is you can actually hold to aim where you're going to fire it. If you just tap it, you're going to just shoot it out in front of you until it hits something. But if you aim it, you can let go. It fires up. And you can even do a ranged attack by doing a charged attack. It will detonate your lightning stiletto wherever it is. So once again, I can throw it. And we can detonate it just from afar. Now, if you detonate it, you're your basic attacks aren't going to turn into electro damage so i don't tend to detonate it unless i'm up against enemies that have a resi heavy resistance 
or immunity to electro damage because otherwise I want my basic attacks to be doing electro damage because you're going to be doing a lot more with your basic attacks usually. Uh, our next ability is actually our alt which is really nice and all it really is it's just an area of effect around you and it's gonna la it's cooldown is 12 seconds energy cost is 40 so you can use this very often you're gonna get the energy back really quickly and there's a 12 second cooldown so most of the time you should only be waiting 12 seconds every time you use it and just an aoe bunch of attacks that are gonna do damage to enemies around you this is the so the first pass of talents actually where you get the lightning damage on your basic attacks after you use your e so after you use your e your first passive is going to give you that electro damage for five seconds when kashing does a normal or charge attack or even a plunging attack and for our level 70 passive when casting uh your alt you're going to increase kashing's crit rate by and energy recharge by 15 percent for eight seconds and I, I think that the, the crit rate is, it's really good and the energy recharge, it's nice, but your alt already costs, only costs 40 energy. So a lot of the times you're not going to utilize the energy recharge and the crit rate, it depends on your build. A lot of the times I'm at, I'm sitting at 75% crit or 80, if you're sitting at 75 or 80% crit rate, you're not going to get much out of the crit rate increase. If you're sitting at 50% crit rate, this is going to be amazing. If you're sitting at 65% crit rate, this is going to be amazing. But after 80% crit rate, you're not getting that much crit out of your crit rate. An example would be something like if you had 100% crit rate, you're only going to actually crit about 85% of the time. I'm not sure if that's the exact ratio, but it's approximately around there. So that just goes to show that even though you have about 100% crit rate, you're not going to be critting much more. It's not. It's usually not worth it to invest crit rate after 80%. So when this goes takes you above 80% crit rate, it's usually not doing much for you. It's maybe doing 1% or 2% extra crit rate for you. Let's move on to the constellations. So when you cast your E, you are going to do 50% of Kishin's attack as AoE electro damage at the start and the end of her blink so so you're going to do an additional 50 percent electro damage to where you teleport to and where you teleport from all right so the start and end point her next constellation is keen extraction and when kaching normal or charge attacks hits enemies affected by electro which you're going to should be doing a lot especially if you have thunder soothers and lion's roar active you're going to have a 50% chance to produce an elemental particle every so basically every five seconds you should be activating this because that's the cooldown and the particles are okay Kishing's and Kishing should be getting her alt back really really fast anyways but if you don't have any energy recharge this can help you get it back and this can give you energy to the rest of your party as well uh constellation three just leveling up your e constellation four for 10 seconds after triggering an electro related elemental reaction, which you should be doing a lot, especially if someone like Jin Xu on your team, or you have a Zhang Ling's alt going around, you should be activating a lot of electro related elemental reactions anyways. And her attack is gonna increase by 25%, which is huge. A 25% attack increase is always gonna be nice. And you should be triggering that constantly which means that you should pretty much always have the 25% increase active. Level five, increase your ult by th three levels. And level six, when initiating a normal a charge attack or elemental skill or elemental burst, Kishin gains 6% electro damage bonus for eight seconds. Effects triggered by normal attacks, charge attacks, or elemental skills, and elemental bursts that are considered independent enemies entities. Okay, so I believe what this is saying is that when you do a normal attack, that's 6% electro damage bonus for 8 seconds. And then when you do a charge attack, that's another 6, bringing you up to 12%. And then when you do an elemental skill, it gives you another 6%. And when you ult, it gives you a further 6% electro damage bonus. So I believe they stack 
but not with themselves. So you can't just do 10 normal attacks in 8 seconds to get 60% electro damage bonus. You have to get do a normal attack, then a charge attack, then an elemental skill, then an elemental burst, which is still really, really, really nice. Let's move on to my party. So currently, my plan with my party is going to be to place down Fischl's Crow and activate uh, Jin Chu's ult to get the water elemental reactions to get electro charge. And we are walk rocking Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayer on our Barbara to boost up my Fishing's attack to probably somewhere around 2000 and with my artifacts noblesse oblige it's going to be an additional 20 percent as well to my to my kashing so it should be anywhere from 2100 to 2200 attack on my kashing uh -huh. which is going to be a bunch of damage hopefully we can do this in one rotation and you can just see how insane this is all right so we're just gonna go here real quick. Let's try and pop it. We got our alt up. We're going to E real quick. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna switch to our Barbara. And then we're going to do this. And we're gonna alt. And just look at that damage. I saw 8K there with some of my autos. Let's just go over here. Let's activate our electro. Wow. Just super easy, super quick, toasted, absolutely obliterated in one cycle. That is insane. That is because I am buffing her up with a bunch of attack and because she always is critting because she has around 80% crit rate after she ults. She is, and she has over 100% crit damage. Her auto attacks are doing a bunch of damage because it's scaling on top of each other. The attack's scaling on the crit, and then the crit's damage is scaling it up even further. And then there's the uh, elemental reactions between the water and the lightning constantly happening. That is insane. All right, guys, so I'm actually just at the Yao Gang Shao, or whatever it's called. I don't know how to pronounce it. If I mispronounce it, I'm sorry. But right now, we're just actually going to see how much attack we actually get on it, Cushing, after we use our ult and we buff her up with Barbara. All right, so let's see. Okay, so here's our alt. Here's our Barbara, and we're switching to our Kashing, and we actually get our attack up to 2,276 here, which is insane. And because we have a 71% crit rate and 116% crit damage, we should be doing a bunch of damage. Let's just alt here, and then we're gonna E, and our crits should be doing a bunch of damage. I do think the buff is about to run out though, so it doesn't last too long, obviously, but it lasts long enough. Yes, yeah, so part of the buff already went away, I think. Yeah, I believe the 20% from Jin Chu's ult is still active. And both buffs are gone now. Actually, no, we have 1778, I think, yes. So it doesn't last too long, but it's it lasts long enough for you to just get insane burst, which is really good against elite enemies. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you liked. Leave a comment down below. And let me know who you want to see next. Especially because I am using a bunch of my fragile resin up to farm for artifacts. So I am running low. And if you want to see a certain character, I'm going to need a lot of artifacts and fragile resin to do that. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Chronic Gamer. Out. I'll see you in the next video.